So, I got my first tag from Frog Tech, and I couldn't be happier because uh, it's for modified gear, and my favorite modified gear. And I, I, I well, maybe it wasn't my favorite, but I couldn't even give you a, a favorite because I modify everything. Um, you'll learn that as my videos go on. My ATV is my life. Uh, and it's modified. <laughs> oh boy, is it modified. I thought about doing that on the video, but since that's really kind of the, the center of, uh, well, my life, really, um, I thought I'd do it on something that I use and carry around with me all the time and something that is, eh, I guess it's heavily modified, technically. Uh, and that's my Mossberg, my Mossberg 12 gauge. This is a Mossberg 835. Let me see if I can get this right here. Um, this is a Mossberg 835 12 gauge. It takes up to three and a half inch magnum shells. It'll take two and three quarter, three inch, three and a half inch mag. Uh, I cut down the barrel. Now, I know somebody's going to go, oh my God, you cut the barrel down, that's illegal. No, it's not. Um, it's cut to 20 inches. Uh, federal law says 18.5 inches is the minimum uh, barrel length for a shotgun. Uh, and this is 20. I got it right at 20. And part of the reason it's cut to 20 is the ribs. Uh, it's the stock. It's the original ribbed barrel that came on this gun. Um, and I, I didn't want to get to where it was, it was too close to 18 and a half. So I opted to, to stick out. I actually, originally I cut it at 22. Uh, if I cut it at the next rib, I'm like right at 18.5. So anyway, 20 inch, perfectly legal. Um, I did have a fiber optic sight on it at one time, but because this thing is mounted, and I'll show that, but because this thing is mounted to the front of my quad all the time, um, uh, it, it, uh, it kept getting whacked with branches and brush and stuff, and, and it got ripped off, so... I just, you know, I don't even worry about it. I just sight line down the rib. There is one bead still on it. Originally, this had two beads. Um, I'm babbling. Anyway, moving forward. Let me see if I can zoom down on this a little bit. There we go. You'll see I got a small Picatinny rail mounted to the magazine. Piece. I'm going to bring it up closer. I still don't think that's close enough. There we go. Um, that is uh, just just a simple aluminum uh, one inch mounting or uh, one inch tube mountable Picatinny rail. You can see it's got. Swing it this way. Oh, by the way, guys, just so you know, it is it is unloaded. All right, don't think I'm stupid. So anyway. Uh, you see the sling is mounted to it there. Cheap little piece. I think the, the rail itself cost about 10 bucks. The sling mount cost about 5 No big deal. Um, what's nice is, take that screw out right there, drop this off, and I have a flashlight in a mount that will go right on that Picatinny rail there. Um, so I, it's, it's a hunting gun. It's a self-protection gun. I can mount a light to it to get a little tac tactical going. Uh, but it's a beater. It's more or less a beater. I mean, you can see I've, I've actually uh, spray painted it once. And a lot of the paint's coming off. It's starting to rust up again as it spends so much time out in the weather. But anyway, let's get it. Let's put it back down. Moving on. Make it jiggly here. Hold on. So, oh, originally it's got... Black synthetic stock front and back. Uh, originally, this had wood. Uh, this is a very old uh, Mossberg 835. This is probably the first generation of the 835 model. And I love it. This was originally my turkey gun. More about that later. Um, anyway, it originally had wood. I custom built my, my, my now turkey gun, the turkey gun I use now. Um, built it from the ground up and the old hardware 
stock and fore end, I sl slapped onto this gun. So moving down, see the stock and but damn, oh there's the, there's the shells they carry in it. No. But damn, this is a Fox Tactical, Fox Outdoors, a Fox Tactical uh, little pouch. Uh, that mounts onto the stock. It's actually used for carrying extra ammo in. Um, it came with, let's see, this. it's got this Velcro field. You can see all my patches, la di da. Uh, it had a five, it had a Velcro string with, with, with five shell holders, and then had another one on the inside with five, five more shell holders, but you could pro probably put um, like 10 rounds inside, or you could, you know, put five rounds inside in a cleaning kit or whatever. Um, cheap little piece of gear, uh, I found on eBay, 15, 20 bucks all day and all night, you know, right around there. Uh, but what I do is, see, I, out in the woods here where I'm at, I, I, I have a base camp. And right now I'm at my second camp. Uh, the last video I shot was at, uh, the camp on my own property. I'm now out in a, a property behind mine that I permission to hunt and, and ride around on and stuff. Um, there's a claw. Nah, I should do that later. Whatever. Um, back to the pouch. I don't want to get sidetracked. I do that easily. Uh, I'm out in the, the, the property behind my place. Uh, there's about 150, 200 acres back here. And this is like a base camp, all right, out here when I'm this far from home. Um, what I might do is I might have base camp set up here and then I will take my shotgun and I will meander out through the woods and and I know these woods pretty well but you never know you know you, you could get turned around you could be gone longer than you think it gets dark you, you you're not sure so just in case you know JIC everything about me is just in case I keep a mini survival kit in here and I am going to I'm going to do this go on camera I still don't want to but let me see if I can get this opened up here you're in frame maybe I should back it out a little bit that's what we'll do yeah. all right let's start off with a knife what survival kit shouldn't have a knife in it right extra blade you never never leave home without an extra blade so that is a Boker Magnum, which is their low end. Um, uh, I, I forgot the name of it. I want to say this is the Warthog. Uh, Boker Magnum Warthog. Uh, it's got a pocket clip. They're G10 scales. It's a big, beefy blade. I mean, really big, beefy blade. It's stainless steel. Um, but I have several of these knives. It got a little too close there. And I really like this knife. I really like this knife a lot. That's why I got a whole bunch of them. Um, they're heavy. They're beefy. They're 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 stout. Uh, short short clip point for prying and digging and whatnot. Um, just a really beefy uh, a beefy blade for a folding knife. Anyway, moving on. Let's see what else I got in there. Right, a compass. And not a button compass either. That's about a you know, inch and a quarter, inch and a half. Um, you know, a full-size compass like you'd find in a frame. It's just not in a frame. Um, very accurate compass, if you can see. Uh, well, you're going to have to trust me because you don't know where I am. But it's pointing north, and that's the way it's supposed to be pointing. I know where north is. Um, and it's all good. So, uh, compass in there, and usually got at least one lighter in there. Yep. Keep a baby back, just in case. You know. And what else? Fire. Fire, fire, fire. That's what it's all about. And let's show, yeah, you can see that good. There's, uh, these are from, uh, Dave Canterbury's store, uh, Pathfinder store. Uh, they're quick fire, instant fire, you know, fast fire, uh, short fire, something like that. Um, they're they're like little cigarette butts of cotton, and 
they're soaked in whatever proprietary substance that they use. Um, but they, they work. They work really well. And this is, uh, I don't even think I've ever used one. This is, this is not the UST, what's it called, Spark Force. This is a, this is a copy that you could get on eBay years ago, a couple years ago. Uh, I don't see them anymore. But I got a pile of these. They're kind of like in every backpack, every bag I have. Um, you know, just just one more way to make fire. And let's put that down right there. What else? Oh, another lighter. Like I said, there's usually one. Might even be two. And I was sure I had matches in here too. Yeah. Yeah. There's some strike anywhere matches in a sealed container. Um, I like to have matches on me because if nothing else, this is also tinder. Um, you know, you, you could put three or four matches on a pile, hit it with the spark or hit it with a, with a uh, the lighter, and you got you know a couple of little sticks of tinder to help get your your fire going. And I'm going off camera, um, so that's it. That's everything that's in there. My political statements are mine. Um, you saw that. Uh, that's all that's in there. I can put more in there if I want. I could probably throw a couple of extra shells. <clears throat> One other thing I do. Back over here. I hope I'm doing a good job with this. And there. Uh, the sling has extra loops on it that I could stick ammo in. Again, I could stick ammo in the bag if I wanted to. Might try to put a uh, uh, an extra a side saddle shell holder on this gun, but the way it mounts up to my uh, my toolbox on the front, I don't know if it'll fit. And I'm going to show you that in just a sec. And before we do that, though, the one other thing I do is I carry double op buck. Plus, I carry bird shot. Um, it is actually target shot, but it serves its purpose. Uh, three rounds of each in the gun. Um, I can I can rack the first three rounds out fast if I need buckshot for something. Um, very uncommon that I would need to do that. Uh, that's why it's three to three and it's in the back and it's not mixed up fast or anything. Um, you know, it's just a, it's a just in case J I C. I should make that my nickname. Um, anyway, I'm going to turn you off for a second. I'm going to move the camera around and I will show you why I might not be able to put a side saddle. Hold on.